At the heart of every sport, behind the points and money, lies a human athlete with perfectly relatable feelings. With that concept, Netflix producers transformed the way we consume golf. Ever since Netflix announced that their sights were set on the America-based tour for a brand new documentary series last January, anticipation grew wildly surrounding the show's release. And now, golf's civil war has gone digital. So what did the documentary reveal about golf's biggest feud and what's been the response of both tours? Will this change the viewpoint of things? Stick around to find out the details. Both the PGA Tour and Live have been locked in a bitter dispute since the formation of the Saudi-funded series last summer, after a reasonable number of golf's biggest names made the contentious decision to jump ship to the Live setup. This move led to their suspension by the PGA Tour. Several of these rebels, including the likes of Brooks Kepka, Dustin Johnson, Joaquin Neiman, and Ian Poulter, are featured in the Fly on the Wall Netflix series. And the producers picked the right time to start documenting behind-the-scenes development in men's professional golf. The documentary series, titled Full Swing, was officially released on February 15th, the Wednesday before the Genesis Invitational kicked off at Riviera Country Club in Los Angeles. While speaking to Mirror Sport, Full Swing's executive producer Chad Mum said that the Netflix cameras continued to follow the live players in the aftermath of their Saudi switch. We had committed to the golfers that were there to tell their story. Same with the PGA Tour. Good or bad, we would be there. Mum and the rest of the world are aware of the happenings in the golf community, but only some know the story behind the whole story. The thing with controversies is that not everyone gets to know both sides of the story. And whose story is more convincible? You be the judge. You see, it all started with Live Golf's commissioner and CEO announcing to the world that preparations were underway to float a parallel golf tour. At least, that's how the message was interpreted. Norman cleared the air that the Saudi-backed league would change the tides in the game, and players would be allowed to play both on tour and anywhere else they wanted to. Although the golf world never took this venture seriously, Liv Live Golf has grown to become a foremost league in the golf world, and now the focus is on players as to why they made the controversial move. The same applies to the PGA Tour, which has reiterated countlessly that it's within its right to ban golfers who jump ship to the rival tour. Soon, the America-based tour increased its prize money and added other incentives, attracting criticisms from players like Phil Mickelson, who claimed that they couldn't stand the competition from the rival league. Well, every party had its side of the story, and Live Golf seems to be taking the worst hit. Major due to its affiliation with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has been accused of human rights abuses and the killing of U.S.-based journalist Jamal Khashoggi. For this reason and several others, people now refer to the millions of dollars flying around on Live Golf as blood money. So it's clear that a lot has been happening over the past few months, and everybody deserves to hear both sides of the story. We were really grateful that the players who had crossed continued to give us access, and we never stopped filming. Chad continued, following their contentious move, players who chose to defect faced plenty of criticism from pundits, fans, and many of their colleagues. Amid the backlash, many have kept their cards close to their chest, but Chad revealed that those who were part of the filming were given a chance to explain their side of the story. We continued filming with them until the end of the season. He continued, We weren't going to abandon those storylines. It was highly important to give them as an opportunity to explain themselves and let them personally be the voice of why they left, not filtered through someone else's reporting. One Live Golf star who featured heavily in the docuseries series is English golfer Ian Poulter. Poulter was one of the famous names to make the controversial switch last summer and has been seriously vocal in the Live PGA Tour division in the past few months. Most famously, the Englishman is well known for his exceptional Ryder Cup record, which has seen him shine for the Europeans over the past two decades. Early this month, the PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monaghan informed players that from next year, their designated tournaments, introduced this season as a worthwhile response to the threat of Live Golf, will feature reduced fields of about 70 to 80 players with no cuts. The similarities to Live were quickly pounced upon, with a post on the Saudi Circuit's official Twitter account reading, Imitation is one of the greatest forms of flattery. Congratulations, PGA Tour, and welcome to the future. In response to the development, Poulter chimed in, claiming the changes bore striking similarities to the Rebel League's format and suggested that the America-based tour should face the same criticism the Live Golf series has faced from the media. Poulter quote-tweeted his former writer Cup teammates post, writing, Oh my my, just when will the penny drop with much of what's actually happened here? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out, and it's a lot similar to another brand that's been spoken so badly about by commentators and media. I'm all ears 
now, I'm waiting. However, Mom has assured fans of the game that they will see another side to the Englishman on the show. Speaking about the 47-year-old, he said, Poulter is a one-of-a-kind character in all of sport. I've watched him beat the US team for so many years. He's such a fascinating character. And whether you hate or love him, this show will definitely open up a new window into his life and career. And I'm so grateful for Poulter's trust. He allowed us to film in a very significant year, potentially rewriting who he is in golf. The appearance of former world number one Rory McIlroy was another surprise revealed by the much-anticipated trailer. Rory was not among the first list of players who were set to comply with producers and participate in the show. You see, in January this year, the PGA Tour announced the new series that will feature a host of golf's biggest stars as they go all out for all four major championships. According to the PGA Tour, the players who initially committed to the series include Abraham Anser, Dustin Johnson, Tony Finau, Justin Thomas, Matthew Fitzpatrick, Colin Morikawa, Joel Dahman, Xander Schauffele, Ricky Fowler, Sergio Garcia, Harry Higgs, Max Homa, Victor Hovland, Brooks Kepka, Kevin Na, and a host of other big names. So it was pretty surprising when Rory appeared in the series. If I want golf to be played by future generations, said Rory in the one minute long teaser, the sport obviously needs to be pushed forward. But if you watch the docuseries, you might have the opinion that it has the golf community split right down the middle. A lot of golf fans who watched it have given their opinions. Some said, it was all about the money and hardly painted the history and integrity of the sport. Popular opinions believed it also painted players in a bad light. Players like Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth as spoiled brats who fly private jets everywhere. So if you look at it this way, it was like an advert for a private jet and millionaire lifestyle. But on the flip side, they said their favorite episodes were Matt Fitzpatrick and Joel Dahman. In the end, it depends on whether you like golf for the money or for the history. You're split on it. But if you look at it from another viewpoint, this is like bringing in a new golfer and another perspective. Some people might look at it and admire the lifestyle of these golfers and strive to do better. So it could get people into the game of golf, but would they be on the side of history or be a rebel? You see, when Netflix cameras failed to show up at Liv's event in Mayakoba, despite their players being signed to the success of its first series, Liv golfers began to feel ignored. While the sequel hasn't been confirmed, Netflix cameras were following Max Homa at the Phoenix Open, a fact picked up by most of the players here. Liv golfers are of the opinion that they are being shut out of Full Swing second series because of the insistence of the PGA Tour to Netflix that it concentrates only on the US-based circuit. When Telegraph Sport reached out to the PGA Tour for comment, they pointed out that a sequel series has yet to be greenlit and directed all queries toward Netflix. Liv, on the other hand, confirmed that the streaming giant has not yet applied to attend any of its tournaments this year, but stressed it would be glad to accommodate its crew. But what do you make of Netflix full swing series? Will Live Golf be at the receiving end this time by being snubbed in the sequel series? We'll catch you in the next one.